All right, everyone, welcome back to Offset Conversations here at Automotive Anatomy. Today's guest, today's guest is definitely, um, I think if it wasn't for this gentleman, Automotive Anatomy wouldn't exist. Um, I said that. No, 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 it's a good thing because um, Jake, our guest, uh, he's out there in the Pacific Northwest, so thank you so much, Jake, for making some time for us, but I've known you for, or know of you uh, virtually, I don't even know how many years because of your four door accord and through the forums and things of that nature. And then you and I had just gone back in DMs. You know, that's all you can do. You're in Seattle. I'm, I'm here in Cali. And just to see the progress on your personal life, on your build, all those things. Um, man, you know, we'll get into that story about how I, how you kind of help shape what automotive anatomy is now but uh thank you so much for making some time for us man, man I appreciate, i'm good i appreciate you having me gus so jake um yeah you're in your garage man uh what's what's that thing that i see back there that, that yellow thing oh man that's just that's that's my my little bucket you know your little bucket and yeah you have good taste when it comes to little buckets <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the Accord, the G, G23 Accord. Um, uh, that's a whole different story, how we went in G, G build. Um, a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people ask what the G build is. Um, so it's either F23 or F22 block, H22 head. Um, there's a lot of people that do it, um, I would say, inexpensively. Right. I'm not that's like you. You, you, yeah, that's you know, like you. We, we all we all have our we all have our own way to do it. Um, and I, I actually was going to go a budget route with it. I was going to go K20 cast piston and um, stock rods. And then uh, I tore the engine apart and then it just kind of snowballed. So um, we're coming up on three years on jack stands. You, you, you didn't tore the engine. You tore the damn car apart, dude. I know. I did. I did. I think you went um, overboard. I'm going to tell you that. Yeah, you know, so I had but a, a reason. Well, that's the reason why your build's going to be so much better than anything I could ever build. I was like, no, because I personally love this single jammer. Because you were non VTEC, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and correct. fitting tens on those RPF ones, and you nailed yeah. it, dude. Like, yeah. In my opinion, one of the best stands, and the car was so simple, so elegant. Man, thank you. No, you wanted to destroy it and, and rebuild it. <laughs> you know, so 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 many people, OGs, Jason, FFC, right? Um, man, so many people told me just to leave it alone. But you know, the, the heart wants what the heart wants, and and so this car. Let's backtrack a little bit. I I bought. I got my first Honda when I was 16. So this is 1997, maybe, I think. Oh, man. So you grew up in a crazy era. The whole yeah. Days. So I, I've watched <laughs> it, the import scene, like, blossom, right? Uh -huh. uh, well, at least in the Pacific Northwest, you know, uh, and a lot of people don't know up here, we've had a really big scene for a long time a uh, big street racing culture just a lot of stuff but we're we're so far detached from everywhere else that a lot of people just just aren't really hip to it or, or understand or you know we kind of have our own little style but uh so i got a first gen crx si um and it was a uh, 86 i believe so i think it's the first year of sport injection the models before were uh, s's so they were sports I traded a, a XR dirt bike for it, a two, XR two, Honda XR 250 dirt bike that I had for a couple of years uh, to my homie Jesse. And uh, it was like driving a go-kart, right? I'm 16 years old. I, actually, that was my second car, but that was my first Honda. Mm -hmm. And then I think I ended up breaking the timing belt on it because I didn't, you know, you're 16, 17, you're hot rod and peeling out. Like I had like a hole in the muffler, you know, it made, it made noise, but crazy thing is that thing actually had such a long second gear it would go 70 miles an hour in second gear <laughs> love it and and the thing had plastic fenders right i don't know you know anybody who's had like that generation of car like they're they're so lightweight right i had a sprint lowering springs on it and their torsion bar in the front right so we just torqued it all the way down 
uh, sprint lowering springs in the back and I just drove the piss out of it. Um, ended up, I think I just left it on the side of the highway to be honest. Cause you know, I don't, I just didn't know anything. Right. Wow. And I, and I had a job, like I had worked, uh, you know, all through high school and stuff. So, um, I went and I ended up buying like a, I was going to buy a four door EG at a, like a little local used dealership. And then for some reason I bought this like Mazda 626. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, I don't know, I had a newer car, like, I, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I hadn't really like gotten into mods or anything like that. And I didn't know the lack of potential, I guess, for the, for that Mazda, that particular Mazda. And, um, about a month before I graduated, I ended up flipping it. Yeah. Like on this, on this back road. And, um, oh. yeah, so. So me and me and my partner, one of my, uh, he was actually my best man at my wedding. Um, and man, uh, someone was looking out for us. Like we didn't have our seatbelts on. We were probably going about like 80 miles an hour. Yeah. And we, and we flipped this thing. So we're like, we went, I, I remember hitting my head and blacking out and then being on the roof of the car on my hands and knees with gravel, like coming into the back window and then another bang. And we're both in our seats safe and sound. Oh my gosh. In the ditch, like the road goes this way. We're sitting this way. Like I was terrible. Like I was like, I thought my life was over, you know, cause I just like wrecked a car. I had payment. Luckily I had like gap insurance and stuff like that. You know, I was responsible enough, I guess. To... <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, I'm flipping cars, but I have insurance. Right. <laughs> so you don't feel that bad, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's funny you mentioned that. Oh, man, that's crazy. Like, you know, all the stuff that we do when we're younger that we don't think about. We don't think about consequences, you know, now, like, you definitely kind of kick back and you're like, ah, let me be more safe. But so before we get to the the more stories about cars, because that's that's really scary, man. Like, I'm so glad that you're okay. Um, Me too. Where where were you born? Uh, Tell Uh, a little bit about you and how you were in school and things of that nature. Yeah, so uh, born and raised Pierce County. Uh, so, uh, you said Seattle, I I'm actually from Tacoma. So Tacoma's Tacoma's the next city down. It's like the second largest city in the Puget Sound area. So, so it's almost disrespectful, like telling you that you're from LA, but you're from San Diego, Orange County. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Okay. So, uh, Tacoma's more of a blue collar city. Um, it has a nickname grit city, mm, Okay. you know, um, uh, it was, um, uh, one of the first, it was actually the first port in uh, Puget Sound uh, before Seattle. Um, so it was actually expanding faster. And it was uh, at, at that time, it was the, called the City of Destiny. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so born and raised, uh, well, I was born in Tacoma, uh, grew up kind of suburb, outskirts a little bit, uh, Gig Harbor area. Um, what else? Uh, what else do you ask me? He said, and, where? and growing up, like how, how was school for you? Did you, did you enjoy oh, school? Oh man. You know, I think I enjoyed the social aspect. You're very social. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I was a terrible student. Um, school wasn't for you? Nah, you know, what's, what's funny is, you know, I'm in school now, right? Now you're kicking ass, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I was a bad, st- I wasn't, I wasn't a bad kid. I was, I, you I had not engaged. Cha- I had challenges. Okay. You know, I wasn't like in, um, like, I wasn't like slow or anything. I wasn't in like, you know, challenged classes or anything, but I just, I didn't have a lot of structure at home. So uh, my dad died when I was four years old. And uh, prior to that, uh, my mom had never had a full-time job before, right? You know, like 60s, 70s, that's kind of how like family dynamics were, right? right? You, know, yeah. you know, the mom stayed at home and the dad worked. Mm-hmm. Um, so my dad ended up, uh, getting throat cancer and like, I think it was like 84, 84, yeah, 84, 85. Um, and so he had been in the hospital, I don't know how long. And so, yeah, so I was like four years old when he passed away. And then, um, my mom, I had two older sisters, uh, seven, eight, seven years older and, and 10 years older than me. So I was the baby and then my mom had to go to work. So, um, my older sister, she ended up having a, having a kid in high school. So now my mom's like 40 years old and she's a grandma, you know, trying to work, trying to balance, trying to, you know, deal with, uh, 
you know, taking on the whole household. And then um, my other sister ended up going off to college, you know, right out, right out of high school. So <clears throat> I was kind of like a, an only child in a sense, probably from like yeah. six, sixth grade on. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, my mom was working nights. So um, there was just no structure. Right. Well, it was like my mom was just so consumed with work and just paying bills and still just kind of doing whatever. And I was like, I showed up to class. You know, you didn't have to give me a note to, you know, I didn't have to forge notes because I was skipping school. I was just showing up and just not doing anything. And then coming home and not really having, um, you know, someone at home to help me with my homework or to uh, keep me on track or, you know, anything like that. It was like, oh, I'm going to play video games, watch TV, or, you know, do whatever. And just, and those sorts of bad habits just ended up, you know, snowballing and compounding, you know, throughout my uh, you know, school career. Yeah, man. I mean, well, you, 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 you're learning, right? Whatever's in your environment, and if you don't have that yeah. structure, it's very difficult to self-manage. Um, especially when you see your mom working in long hours and then yeah. your sister getting pregnant, you know, young age, and so it's like, right. man, it's a lot. So then, how were you in high school? Man, I was even worse. Yeah, no, I, yeah, it got it got worse. I think I just pulled my transcripts because I wanted to compare from my college GPA to my high school. Your college GPA uh, is really good. <laughs> man, I got a, I got a check. I just got a, I think I got a three point nine this quarter. So I, I should be at like a thank you. I uh, should be at like a three point eight, three. I think last time I checked, I was three point seven eight in college. But uh, I graduated with a one point seven eight GPA, and I did graduate though. Okay. Um, but I think my, my freshman year, man, I think I probably failed half of my classes. Was there a class that you actually did like? Yeah. Art, um, anything art related. Uh, I didn't really like clay or pottery cause it's just too messy. You know, I was trying to be cool and like have clean clothes and shit, like, <laughs> you know, be fly. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. White uh, shoes that have to yeah. be white. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, art, uh, PE, like, you know, we were talking before, you know, I, I played a lot of basketball growing up. So uh, PE was always something that I thrived in, you know, anything uh, physical, sports, stuff like that. And then um, I did like uh, my business classes, you know, uh, marketing and DECA. I don't know if you ever had any of those classes or any, I don't even know what DECA stands for, but like we had like a student store. And so part of the class like you would run the student store it was like a convenience mm -hmm. store yeah so we you know handled transactions and had like a, a otis spunkmeyer cookie maker and and sell cookies and candy and soda and bump music and you know whoever was wow. running the store got to pick the playlist and and all that so yeah so that, mid -90s, that was right yeah 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 mid yeah mid late 90s yeah wow, it's a whole different era uh, no, I mean, now they only have like economics for half a year. That's, that's okay. business. Uh, I'm sure some schools have like more uh, business, but it would be right. like private because it's, it's sadly, um, it's one of those things that are, they're taking away. And that's the reason why I asked you, I mean, you see this common theme with, uh, builders like you that are great with working with your hands, but mm -hmm. school was not engaging. And so, yeah, not, not that you're a, that student are not smart it's just you're not engaged and so when you're not engaged right um you you tend to do some other stuff right which is drawing or you know yeah you, you only focus on those classes that what's well, how do you hands on it's easy to go the wrong direction if if um you know the type of curriculum is isn't there for the way you learn right you know every, everybody learns so much differently and and i'm i mean i I would put money that if I had both parents at home, you know, it would have been different, but I don't know how much different it would have been. Right. Like, you know, I was always like my first, like, you know, when you're a little kid and someone asks you what you want to be, I wanted to be a race car driver, like five years old. Like, what do you want to be? You know, I wanted to be a race car driver. Like I was always into, always like motorsports. There was for whatever reason, there was always, you know, if there was a, a, a NASCAR race or an Indy car race, you know, I was with my buddies. We're always watching it and stuff. So, so for me, like cars was always mm -hmm. just on my head, you know. How did that start? Um, my dad was into cars. My dad had a, um, 
I think it was a, like a fifties Ford pickup. And he had a, this guy got to be in the seventies, maybe mid seventies. He had swapped like a Chevy 350 motor in it and stuff. Um, and my mom would tell me stories when they lived in Montana, the, the neighbor would start his semi up like middle of the night, like get ready to leave, you know, for work. And it pissed my dad off. So my dad had uh, unbolt his exhaust and run open header and start his, <laughs> start his uh, little, little, little Ford Ford with a Chevy 350 swap uh, run open header to piss off the neighbors. So, <laughs> um, and my dad had an old, um, I don't know if it was a pan head or a knuckle head. I always forget uh, old Harley. Um, and I remember like super, some of my earliest memories, like this engine would be taken apart on the kitchen table. <laughs> a gangster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so that was like, like probably like two years old, maybe like, you know, these super vivid. Right. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's really where, where that started was. And then it just continued. And as we know, man, Hondas are the uh, modern day hot rod. Yeah. I, I keep hearing that. So was it, honda that you really got hooked on how did like the whole modifying the whole um modification specific kind of start for you i mean were you into low riders or the hot rods or what was it yeah i was i was in the low riders uh my first car was a 78 cutlass brom oh shoot and i didn't you know i didn't know what i i, I would man, i was looking on a uh, classifieds the other day this 78 cutlass is selling between 10 and twenty thousand now right and this thing had, had like um it was a thousand bucks. Uh, it had like some generic Craigers on it, like gold and gold and uh, polished, you know, gold spokes and polished lips. And um, you know how many, you know how many sixteen year olds you could fit in a Cutlass and a seventy eight Cutlass? You can pack that thing full. So I'm sure uh, you tried. <laughs> man, yeah. So two bench seats. So we just pushed that thing around. But like I said, I not having a dad, I didn't really have like a mechanical upbringing or you even have like the proper tools to do anything. Yeah. I had some, you know, friends, one of my friends owned, uh, his dad owned a shop. So he worked at the shop and stuff, but, um, but you know, as far as me, my knowledge was like non-existent. And then I, um, uh, drove a friend's car. It was like a 1989 Nissan Pulsar. It kind of looks like it's a two seater. kind of looks like a, a Del Sol, but it's like boxy. And that was the first front wheel drive car I'd driven. Mm -hmm. And it was like driving a go-kart, right? Oh, really? You liked it. Yeah. And I was like nimble, right? Light, nimble, five speed. You know, I'm driving this big old boat, you know, and I don't have the funds to lower it or do hydros or anything like that. Right. So sell this thing to my, sell the cut, cut list to this dude, Abe, I went to school with a friend of mine, excuse me. Um, and so I, I drove John's uh, Pulsar and I, I was like, yo, I need to, I need to get my hands on something like this. And then I had a dirt bike. So I traded the dirt bike to my buddy, Jesse for the CRX. And then, and then obviously I blew that up, flipped the Mazda. And there was a, a local shop in Tacoma. There's two of them. They're called fast lane one and fast lane two. And they were like kind of the shop you would go to, to go pick up your, you know, your seatbelt pads and your, your, your little trinkets, you know, um, any, anything Japanese, right. The, the squash air fresheners and all that. And, uh, uh, older cat that I knew Paul, um, had one, he had it, or he, he worked there. He had a DA, mm. a Jas Jasper green, uh, DA. So, uh, my senior year after I had wrecked a car, I ended up buying it from, him. he had already been out of school a couple of years. He was kind of like, one of the OGs. There's like quite a few of these guys that were affiliated with, with fast lane. And, um, that was it, man. I got the DA DA and then, uh, damn, I broke the timing belt on that one too. I got a, <laughs> I got a DUI in that car. Nice. <laughs> the, 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 about three months after, uh, owning it, I got pulled over the night I bought it. <laughs> I, I yes. drove it. This is what I, I drove it. <laughs> man. So, and cause he worked at a speed shop prior. Right. So this had like, it was lowered. Um, they weren't the, um, at the time they were the Volk AV three knockoffs, the Koenig monsoons. Mm. Uh, so I had 18 inch Koenig monsoons. So this is like, you know, 
this that era, right? Hot import yeah. knives, 2000 to 2005. You know, everything had 17s or 18s on it. So I had 18 inch Koenig Monsoons. Um, still had just an LS motor in it, but um, like MSD ignition, uh, intake, Gretty exhaust, and lower. You know, people weren't riding on coilovers back then, it was lower in springs. I had a, a Z speed strut bar and uh, and a short shifter. So and, like a, you know, so, quite a little toy, yeah. Yeah, and you know, so I'm 18, right? I already done flipped the car going 80 miles an hour, and so uh, this Mercedes was fucking with me driving up from up I five, and um, I should have known better because coming into Olympia, it's it's the next city south of Tacoma, it's the capital, so there's always there's always cops and stuff like by the capital, there's always state patrolmen, and uh, so I like grabbed like third on this guy. It was a straight and. And I dug out, and sure enough, I get lit up. And then this Mercedes, this Mercedes is honking at me while I, while I fucking pulled over. You know, eighteen year old shit, right? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, they're never gonna pull the, the luxury cars. They're always gonna go against. Nah, guys. yeah. So, um, and that was kind of the start of it. I had that car for a few years. Um, like I said, I got into some trouble in that car, and I was already like from not doing well in school. Right, had just barely graduated. And I was just, I was going the wrong way, you know, obviously drinking and driving that young and, 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 uh, hanging out with, you know, the homies and everybody else that was into the same shit I was into and not going to school and all, and all that stuff. And, and, um, yeah, I had that car for a few years. I drove it on a suspended for a few years. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, and that car ended up. Uh, I ended up selling that to my friend, and it ended up getting stolen. Oh. It got jacked. You know, there's. I'm still worried about my cars getting stolen out here. Oh yeah, um, definitely. Big time. But hey, what, uh, what were you working at the time? Were you working? Yeah. So, um, dang. At the time, I kind of jumped around. I was doing some concrete work in high school. I was also mm -hmm. working at a country country club. I was a, a bus boy at a local country club um and then i what was i doing i was working at a where uh, like a seafood warehouse oh man they smoke salmon at this place bro your clothes smell so bad like <laughs> you were you were chilling with the ladies <laughs> oh bro so i only wore i only had one pair of work clothes because this place because they're smoking salmon inside this mm -hmm. warehouse right so i had like the same pair of pants and the same sweater <laughs> you know Cause I'm like, what, what's the point of wearing five Maybe different more, pairs yeah. of jeans? Dog. So uh, I worked at, at a little smoked salmon joint. And then um, I worked at a, uh, like a produce uh, meat market, like a, like an independent grocery store kind of, mm -hmm. I was working in the meat department um, and I was learning how to cut meat and end up uh, being a butcher for a couple of years working there. Yeah. So, so that yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of just jumped around a lot. So that's what was funding all your, your fund. And yeah. You know, it was, yeah, it was, it was more uh paying, paying court fines and going, you know, going out. Right. <laughs> like, like I wasn't like, I was into cars. Like I would buy every car magazine, but I was just into other shit too. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my priorities just were not in line. <laughs> yeah. You were you just know. having fun, whatever you, Oh because, yeah, yeah. Whatever you were into in that that time, um, as a youngster, you know, 18, 19, yeah. 20, like that's what you're gonna be into. Um, yeah, I was, you, I was living. You were living, yeah, that's for sure. I'm sure, you know. Yeah, but, fast. But, you know, but that's the thing, like, you know, sometimes they say to be old and wise, you have to be young and stupid, right? And so yeah. Now you look back, you're like, what was I thinking? I mean, the same thing with you. I mean, I, 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 I can't remember the last time I, I drove. You know, wow with a couple of beers but that was normal at some point in my life like yeah. my friends would be drinking at a party and then how do you get home like you wouldn't even think of the fact that there was an uber right so yeah but, but it was just normal it's like oh i can drive you know and yeah like not ED, as wild to me but you know ed wasn't like an option well the the option was whoever is the least drunk <laughs> yeah hand the keys over right yeah but but it was crazy like that's it goes back to that was the environment that we were, you know, growing up in. And so mm -hmm. now you look back, you're like, yeah, maybe that wasn't the best uh, set of choices. But yeah. during that time, that's what you knew. And that's what you were doing, you know. And, right. And, and that's, you know, that's how it is. It's the consequences. So 
then the DA you sell, what else yeah. do you get next? Man, I rode the bus for a while. Did you? Yeah, I had to humble myself because um, I was still trying to get um, my license back. You know, I was trying to I was trying to figure it out, right? And and that was like. I knew if I had the car, I wasn't going to yeah. stop. Mm -hmm. I'd still be driving on suspended. So, mm -hmm. You know, I'd still be going crazy, right? So we yeah. running around the city acting a fool. So I, there was like a, a sliver of responsibility that I had, you know, <laughs> inside of me. And, and so, so I, you know, my partner wanted it. He always liked the car. And, and uh, I was like, yo, just make me some payments. And, and I rode the bus, man. I rode the bus up until um, I met my wife. So how yeah, long was rode, that? Like, what do you think? That was a six man, months, I a the, year? I rode, nah, I rode the bus like three years. Whoa. Yeah. I rode the bus like three years. I just hopped rides with people. You know, I'd like, I had some friends that ended up going off to college down in like Arizona. I didn't have a driver's license. I had a, an ID, right? Like, so I'd go, yeah, I'd still be partying. I just wasn't. I wasn't driving, you know. It was just taking um, a little longer to get to the party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, hop a ride with somebody. Take, take or, the bus uh, route. All right. Yeah, I no, I, I used to. Um, so there's like express buses from city to city, oh. and so there's like you know, it's like it's like one transit center, and it takes you into downtown Seattle. Like it's one bus, all like almost like a Greyhound would or something, but it's oh, a it's no a way. but it's a city bus. Um, and my sister worked. Uh, for a company that um, we don't want to say the company gave her a card mm -hmm. uh, to uh, like an incentive to take public transportation. Right, right. So it's like endless transfers, right? She, she bought it or they, they funded it. And she's like, you're riding the bus all the time. So I'd, I'd hop the bus to Seattle. We'd go to parties at UW, go clubbing. So I had a friend that had an apartment in downtown Seattle. So uh, man, I just, on a Friday night, I'd hop the express after after work, bring a, a change of clothes. And, you, don't want, and, you don't want to be smelling like salmon. I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This at this time I was. I, I was later. Uh, <laughs> you would go yeah. home with change first. I think I was. Shower. I think I was. I think I was landscaping at this time now. Uh, but yeah, so man, hop hop the bus, dig out, go hit up some clubs, some parties, catch the express bus home Sunday. Oh, you were gone the whole week. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'd, I'd take I'd stay the whole weekend up in Seattle, and we'd cab it or or do whatever, right? Because this yeah. is before Uber. Yeah, yeah, young and you. Excuse me. You got the energy, and you got that's crazy. Yeah. So then, you you met your wife, um, mm -hmm. and so then you're like, damn, it's kind of hard to be rolling around the bus. So what happens next? Man, you know this is so funny. I tell the story all the time. Uh, she worked um, not too far from where I live. And I was like, hey, I, I want to come see you at lunch. I was like, I'm, I'm going to hop the bus to come see you. She's like, no, no, no I'll, I'll come pick you up after work. Like, you do, She's like, you don't need to be riding the bus just walking into my work. Like, almost like embarrassing a little bit, you know? Uh, <laughs> now, now you think about it, you know? It's like, yeah. Nice. No, she's embarrassed. But I, I had no shame, though, you know? Like, if I had some place to go, right, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to sit on my ass. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's kind of like how I've always been, right? If there's something that I want to do, like I'm going to do it, whether it be hustle, grind, if, if I need to go somewhere, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get there. So she had, so, a, she wasn't driving on suspended. <laughs> she had, she had a, she had a, a, a Sage Metallic uh, CD5. Oh, shit. That's yeah. Dope. So that's actually, this is actually our third Sage Metallic in our and since we've been together man i don't know how you guys do that color i you know it looks nice but not my favorite <laughs> i'll be honest you know you i i like the exterior color i don't like the interior color it's like a that light blue grayish no yeah like the dashboard's blue like like it still has like i like the it still has the 80s thing. it still has the 80s color scheme it's, yeah, kind of, right? Like, like late into the 80s, right? There's a lot of blues and reds and, you know, mer burgundies and stuff. Um, I think it just carried over into the mid-90s as far as the, the blue uh, the blue color, color way. Then they fired that guy. He's like, all right, dude, you got to yeah. change it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like it too a little bit more than the outside color. But again. Really? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like, well, we'll talk about the, the deals that you got going on. Um, Damn. Colors, I think it's going to be, it's going to be really good. But so then you, so. Hurt my feelings, yeah. Gus. Dude, I, you know how it is. I don't. I know. Yeah, yeah. Hey. certain colors, I just, ah, you know, like the, the tan interior. Goldfish is like one of the very few. And Ralph's, the only few that I can deal with the tan interior. Dog, I can't do the tan interior. Exactly. I cannot do it. It looks super clean. But I cannot do it. It's just one of those things, uh, goldfish, yellow, uh, yellow, gold, whatever. Like, I yeah, can't, I can't do it. But, but yeah, you know. uh, one of the homies was over. Um, he picked up a block for me the other day, and and uh, he pulled up in a granny gold CD. I said, "Oh, with the granny gold." He's like, "Why are you hating on it?" I said, nah, "I'm just saying, man. That's they look what very they call clean. It. They look very yeah. clean, but." I just cannot do it. You know, I I, I would <laughs> it would not be my first choice, sadly. Nah. <laughs> so she's like, all right, you, you start thinking like now I want to get a car or whatever goes through your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, at that time, I actually got a, a, a good job. You know, I had kind of bounced around. I've always labored construction, landscaping, meat, cut meat, right, um, warehouse work. And I ended up getting a job that was a, a union uh, warehouse job. Yeah, so like good benefits, good starting pay. You know, I think, I think from my landscaping job to that, it was like a five dollar an hour increase. Huge. Yeah, which Huge. you know, at like, I think uh, so. That was like fifteen years ago. So, I mean, yeah, man, at, at like twenty something, twenty three, twenty four. Really like, yeah, I was like, ooh, I'm like, okay, let's go. And then, uh, then I got my license back, you know, my, my wife really, um, I mean, I think she saw something in me before I saw it in myself. Like I was already like doing the response, semi-responsible thing, like riding the bus. Like I wasn't out, you know, drinking and driving and stuff. And I had made that decision already, but I still wasn't like, had fully like made the switch to like becoming a citizen, I would say. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah, yeah, I get you, uh, get you. And um, yeah, so I was like, yo, I wanna, I was like, I wanna get my shit together. Like this, this girl's cool, she, and she's a little bit older than me. And like, she, we both just uh, had a had the same. Uh, well, actually, hold, let me backtrack. I had picked up a Sage Metallic from my buddy that was in an accident, so I was still driving on a suspended again. But uh, but responsible now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, that was that was to get to work. I literally bought it so I get to work and <laughs> and then uh so we started talking and stuff and then um uh you know I was like man I like you know we vibed and and just you know we're still together to this day right so obviously something something was right there and uh Perfect. yeah man <laughs> yeah, right, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah but no I, I think she saw something in me before I did and then um Man, I, I finished paying off all my fines and and I was, you know, a couple years, I was maybe like a year at this job now. So I'd gotten another raise and, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of build up my credit. And so I, I bought a, uh, you know, we're going back to lowriders now. I bought a, a 03 Lincoln Town Car. Nice. Yeah. Well, so it was either that or an RSX. Like, because I... <laughs> Well, you know, and, and so the thing was, is, is I didn't want to buy the Honda cause I would be, I would modify it. Yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I, and, and, and now we're like mid, mid 2000. So there's a lot more like higher end parts that are coming out. It's not like drop springs when I was in high school and stuff. There's, you know, there's like some After cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like some real good development and stuff. So I was like, Ooh, I'm like, I'm like, but I knew myself enough that I, I wasn't quite ready res responsibly to buy an RSX. So I bought the town car and, um, man, that thing was cool, man. Uh, I love, I love that car. And then, uh, I had bought a CRX and SI. I wanted to take it back to, um, it wasn't an SI. It was like an HF or whatever. But I want to take it back to high school, right? Like I had the car now. Now I wanted to have the project. And um, I was too big for that damn thing, you know? And this, it wasn't running. I think it just needed like a new distributor or something. Uh, got it run. I bought it for like 300 bucks. It was, you know, rough on the, it was straight, but it was just rough. 
Um, and my friend's little brother had just gotten his EJ one stolen and, uh, you know, he needed to get to and from. And so I was like, you know what, I'm in a position. I'll trade you the CRX for your EJ, you know, cause I was going to make a race car anyway. So that's kind of where, where we're right. We'll get to where we're at, but, <laughs> but it was already like semi stripped cause it was stolen. And so I ended up picking a GSR, picking up a GSR block from, from a friend. And, um, man, I started tearing this car down, just kind of <laughs> how mine is. And then, uh, then we got pregnant with twins. Tell me about that. I mean, cause man, twins, dude, like, whoa, it's amazing. <laughs> like, like, shoot, not one, but two. Um, and then, you know, what's crazy that I, it, you know, we go through every day in life, so we don't really like think about it so much, but ever since I've been following social media, I've seen how your your daughters have been growing up and they're yeah. so big now. Dog. And, then, and then when you show like, you know, like stories from like even five, six years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, I remember seeing that picture when you uploaded <laughs> it live. When you uploaded yeah. it live and the car was there. And those are my favorite pictures when they're in front of the car. or they're, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, they're so big now. <laughs> you know, my, my favorite one is the... Um, well, I like when we go down to the waterfront, we've taken several pictures down there, but when they were washing the RPF ones in the, mm. um, in the grass in our front yard and, uh, you know, like they they, they love it. Like my odyssey, they, um, they want to drive that to school when they start to get their license, oh, that's so dope. you know, and I take so them to, to the community events, like, like to the point now, like if I show up without them. All the homies are like, "What? Where's the family at?" Because I'm I'm the guy, right? Like, I bring I bring my whole household with me. Cool. Yeah, you know they're they they love it. You know, so, uh, one of them actually, she wants like a freaking donk, and she's the, the smaller of the two twins. Yeah, she wants like twenty sixes. Boom. You know, flashy paint, all Oops. that. But but uh, but now twin twins are great. We um. You know, for everybody that has their first child, you're, man, you're learning on the fly. There's, you can read a million <laughs> books, right? And, and you're going to have an idea, but it's, it's one of those things where, where being a parent, um, man, you're going to, you're going to fail so many times, you know, just because you just don't know what you're doing. And, and now we're at that times too. Um, there's been times where I'm like, oh my God, I'm probably just the worst dad ever. Just cause you know, like you lose your patience or, or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, we had two healthy baby girls. Um, you know, so far ev everything's been great with them. Um, thankfully they didn't cry at the same time ever. Yeah, they took, yeah. Turns. they took turns, which is great, right? Like <laughs> trying to manage sure, two, sure. <laughs> yeah, trying to manage two babies. Um, but yeah, it was it was crazy. Like the the first year was a whirlwind. We had a feeding chart because the middle of the night, you're like, which one do you have? <laughs> you know, like that's a that's a real thing. They sent us home with a feeding chart, and they were like, okay, like we know you guys don't know what you're doing right basically in in the nicest way yeah, yeah, yeah they're like they're like when you feed them in the middle of the night because you will be feeding them in the middle of the night mark down which which baby you're feeding so you know that they're excuse me uh well, like a get, one, you put a, you put a one at the bottom of their, their sheet, yeah yeah two. Who so one of them, <laughs> so they're actually fraternal and and now they look they look a lot different they're actually like a couple inches different in saw in height Mm -hmm. and probably about 20 pounds different in weight. Um, so they're, they're, they're drastically different. Um, but at three months old, you know, I couldn't understand why people couldn't tell them apart. I'd get, I'd get irritated. You know, I'm like, you can't tell them apart. And now we look back at like, oh. that first. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. The, the, the pink binky gives it away now. But one of them had a, eye, a birthmark on her eyelid. It's gone now, but she, when she would close her eyes, you could tell. Mm -hmm. And she has a she has a birthmark on her thigh. 
So uh, the birthmarks were were quick tell signs uh, for you, <laughs> for you. Yeah, for yeah, for us, right? Nobody else, know. Yeah. <laughs> so then, during that time, you still have the the town car. Yeah, yeah. So they um, and not I a bad, not they, a bad car uh, for families, big and bumps. No, it was great. Oh, man, it's huge, right? You could you could fit you could fit <laughs> them. We had it. We had a dog too. So yeah, we had like the whole thing. Only thing we were missing was the picket fence um but uh in the house the house and the picket fence but yes yeah, so we had the town car it was perfect the trunk was huge man we could fit a whole stroller in there diaper bags the whole nine and my wife um had since graduated from a from her cd because it had gotten stolen twice oh, wow. and then uh sold it sold it to uh sold it to the homie um and then he ended up like he ended up run into the ground he ended up getting locked up and and mm -hmm. uh but anyways um so that car's rest in peace my 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 other one is rest in peace actually he bought we sold him both of our sage metallics anyways both of them those things are gone um <laughs> did not sell this one <laughs> my you know the thing is is when like he comes it was whatever when he comes out of jail do not sell this one. <laughs> oh no he ain't touching this one uh yeah uh so then you're like, okay. What, so so we, bought a, we bought a we bought a DB four door. Ooh, uh, nice. nice. So this was a one owner car at a local Acura dealership. It was a trade in, and um, her son was a Honda Acura Master Tech. Nice. So it was an automatic. It was a GS. It was a '97 uh, GS uh, Bordeaux with leather. Yeah, yeah, it's Acura. So yeah, a little bit. Nice. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was nice. Um, and so. Because she was at home with the girls, I started driving the Integra. But it was <laughs> the only thing is the only thing it was automatic, right? But I started to kind of get the bug going again because I I oh I ended up selling the EJ once we had twins. I sold the shell and everything I had because because we we needed to buy a house. We were living at my mom's house at the time. We just needed our own digs and and you know again it was like I was getting the bug again and then we had you know had got pregnant had you got to make grown-up decisions sometimes you know yeah. that's why i'm still 39 years old still fucking with hondas because i still haven't been able to build one yet <laughs> and that's why we love you man because that's so cool yeah. so um, then you get that db that's the one that you're daily yeah yeah so i'm daily in that to and from my warehouse job the union job and she's a little filipino girl five foot tall pushing this uh town car around with two babies in it and um, then because of the dog and we had just bought in a house, we ended up, uh, we were in an apartment for a little bit after the babies. And then we finally got into purchasing a house and um, we felt bad because we have, we had like a lab Labrador pit bull mix dog. And, and he was a puppy when me and her first met and he's part of the family, you know, everybody that has, you know, yeah. yeah. But he's so big, you can't. You, he's space, energy taking out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we ended up, um, and the the town car started to have electrical issues, just little little quirky shit, right? Traded it in, and we got like a, a 03 Tahoe, so we could bring Jube, bring Jube along along with us with the twins and do family stuff and have have my boy. You know, it couldn't just be uh, three three girls and one dude. We had to you know bring bring our boy along with us. So. And, um, but so I'm still daily in that, the, the DB, well, then I bought, um, clutch pedal and started by started sourcing stuff yeah. to do it's, it's inevitable, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And, um, then I realized I was just kind of too big for that car. I'm a, you know, I'm a bit, I'm a big dude, right? I'm like six, three, like 300 pounds. Right. And, uh, and, and I couldn't really fit the girls in it either. Like once they started having bigger seats. So I started looking, started getting the bug, like really getting the bug. And I've always loved Accords. Um, I used to cut up magazines back in the late nineties mm -hmm. and make my own posters. I used to cut oh. up imp import magazines to make my own posters a lot from like turbo and high-tech performance they had like the 10 second club all like the 10 second hondas and stuff um but a lot of racing heart ads and there's an old racing heart ad uh with a cd5 on c5s no way yeah 
from, from the nineties, late nineties. And that car always stuck out to me. Um, and, and I, and obviously uh, the JTCC cars as well. Right. Yeah. And, and undeniably like the CD Accord is probably one of, probably one of the best looking design, you know, cars Honda has, has designed. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was just kind of outgrowing the, the DB. It just wasn't really what I really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I was actually looking for a wagon and um, what kind of wagon? Look, a CD or a CE. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I was I was looking for an Accord wagon because I was gonna go like full fitment, like crazy. You know, I already kind of went bananas anyways with the wheels that I had. And then, um, man, I just couldn't find I couldn't find a clean wagon. I couldn't find a clean five speed. I really wanted a five speed. I didn't want to have to oh, go through. Good luck, man. <laughs> the auto, yeah, the auto, the manual, and and I was gonna I was gonna get an auto because I wanted a wagon that bad. I just couldn't find a good one locally. And there was this, uh, excuse me, um, you know, there's little dealerships all over. There's one in North Seattle. And I saw, I saw this car here. It's for like 30, 3,200. And it was right around my birthday. And what uh, year so, was this? Man, it's been, it's been modified for six years. So we're seven, eight years ago, eight years ago, maybe. So okay. we're 2021. So we're, yeah. Okay. 2013 if my math is correct and um it was you know you know when you see a car in pictures and you're like man that car looks good and then you go and it's just it's not it's, it's not. not it's not <laughs> it right yeah this was it this, this was it had it, all the floor mats had factory head unit only thing it didn't have was a trunk mat still has the booklet of honda of linwood Love where it. where it was originally sold and this particular dealership he only buys from a toyota dealership on the east side and a honda dealership on the east side which is like an affluent like seattle suburb right and it was somebody it was a one owner car and manual? uh the manual okay how many miles yeah. uh, at the time was like 150 okay but we'll take yeah. it here. Yeah, well taken care of. First thing I checked was like quarter panels for rust and stuff. Um, had, you know, had some bumps and bruises, but nothing major. There's still a ding in the trunk. I just picked up a new trunk from the wrecking yard. A couple blemishes on the front bumper, but all the panels were straight. It smelled like smelled a little bit like mildew, like it had been sitting for a little bit. Uh, I mean, that's expected. Uh, when I first turned on the AC, because it was kind of warm that day, uh, some pine some pine needles came out. Right, you know, it had been sitting under a tree oh, or something. Um, other than that, whew, man, it started up and, and I had to have it. So, and I didn't really have, I wasn't really that secure at the time, like financially. Uh, the homie uh, lent me the down payment. I financed it. I didn't even have the cash, but I just knew I had to have it. And so I financed it, um, you know, thanks to Daniel for the down payment. And I got him back like within like a few weeks and, and uh, sold the DB and uh bought coilovers <laughs> but, I, but I, dro- I drove it i probably drove it in stock trim for about seven eight months okay. but i already knew i already knew that this was this was it right um and so i sold the db uh bought some function form type twos and i drove it on hubcaps for like a year but they look great you just lower the car and, and they yeah. look great yeah they're amazing and i had but i had it like slammed because i like low you know i like low shit right and then um before i even did my five lug I, so that we'll get to the ankies now so this is how we got the ankies so my tahoe um the uh alternator had one out i wasn't sure if it was the alternator or start i i, I didn't know what it was but um I jumped it, drove it to the Firestone, which is like two miles away. Mm-hmm. And as I'm pulling, as I'm pulling in, the Tahoe dies, right? So it's nice. it's like, so it's like, so they they uh ran ran a charge test and stuff. It um mm-hmm. wasn't the battery, it was it was the alternator. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, damn. I'm like, you guys sell wheels here, right? 
and I had a Firestone credit card. You go for all the training. <laughs> Start asking about the wheels. <laughs> yes, so, we do, young man. Yeah, he goes, yeah. And so uh, a lot of people don't know, Firestone actually uh, gets all their stuff through TireRack.com. Oh. So anything that TireRack.com has, uh, you can go directly to a Firestone. And they can order it from them, and it's no shipping. So uh, I was already eyeballing the specs, right? I, you know, I've been doing, I've been looking, and uh, so Alex, uh, NorCal, his white car, on the five Ziggins. I believe he was seventeen by ten. I think those are like twenty five. Super aggressive. Yeah. Um. And I was like, ooh, and then DJ's car. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, but I wasn't, I, I'm not, I wasn't into like lip, you know, full lip kits and stuff like that, but still DJ's car, the fitment, everything. So those are like the two that I wanted to, you know, those were like two influences for me buying the RPF ones. Mm -hmm. And so I told the dude, I said, hey, I, I said, I'm looking for a set. Of, and I, I was like, I think they're like this size. And so he's looking them up and he goes, that's like a Evo spec wheel. I go, yeah, yeah. yeah those are the one. That's those are the one. <laughs> and he goes, what do you have? I said, a Honda Accord. He's like, I'm gonna fix you know, he goes, you know, we can't return these. Right. And I go, yeah, that's cool. I go, let's, I go, let's, I go, I go, let's run it. So he orders them. And I, in the meantime, I get picked up cause I had to go to work. Uh, my wife got dropped off and I go, I just told her, I said, hey, I said, the guy's going to give you some paperwork. I said, just fold it up and um, <laughs> I go, just fold it, just fold it up and leave it on the table for me. And uh, he was getting me a quote or, or whatever. And so I looked at it, I slept on it. And then the next day on my way to work, I slid up in there and I said, let's order them. And I hadn't even bought anything for the five lug. I was still four lug. I was still, you know, hub over rotor. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, like a week later, some brand new 17 by 10 plus 18 RPF ones came in and they sat next to my bed for like the next five months. <laughs> my, these four boxes of wheels. And my wife was like, what in the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know, uh, but but she knew, though, right, because I was always in magazines. I was like, oh, you know. And, and I, I was now transitioning into like parenthood, right? I had bought in the house. Like I was really phasing from like my early 20s into like, you know, I think, you know, where, where my real passion lies. I just now had the, um, the wherewithal to understand that, right? Like so, some of the other shit just doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you know? And um, man, so I sourced all the Phylog stuff and uh, it was Father's Day. Um, I, that's what I spent my father's day was, was doing my five look and, uh, Joey, Joey Lee had done, I think his first Seattle meet and I wanted to go so bad, but I just, I, my, you know, I needed to massage the fenders and do so much work to get those wheels to fit. You think? And, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I got them. I got them to fit. So what happened? Um, so you couldn't make Joey Lee's uh, meet. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I just kept working on the car, you know, uh, I just kept working on the car. It probably took me like probably the whole weekend of beating on the inner fender. I didn't have a fender roller. I went old school with a little bit of duct tape and a jack handle and, uh, you know, rolling them back and forth. And I, and I didn't have like any car friends around here. I did it all by myself, like just with reading write-ups, you know, I had a, a, a still the same tool kit that I use as my craftsman 200 piece. Right. Like I don't, I don't, I barely have a toolbox. You know, and I'm building this whole car with just, you know, just that basically. Uh, but yeah, so I worked on that and got it rolling and then uh, slowly kind of dialed in the fitment um, stock, stock camber arms. So uh, OEM upper control arms, OEM rear uh, UCAs. <laughs> I was like uh, negative on that. I was negative four and a half degrees camber at the corners. And I daily drove it like that for like four years wild yeah yeah in the snow too whatever man in i drove snow. Wow. yeah well i mean we get snow like twice a year right it's not like fucking yeah, but you, guys, you guys get rain all the time so yeah oh man i feel bad for anybody that drove behind me the spray behind me was terrible <laughs> dog. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> neighbors it just shoot straight up in the air. Like I feel bad for anyone on the freeway. If 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 uh, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> How did you come up with the name? What's that, Hildegard? Mm-hmm. Hildegard. Um, man, I'm big into like meanings of of words and stuff. Hildegard translates to some like old European language to a uh, battle I think battle strong and um, yeah and and my daughters and I didn't even know my daughters were watching I think it was a some Disney show Sophia something rather it's like a print you know Disney has princesses galore right and one of the princesses on that show was princess Hildegard and I didn't even know right so I came up with the name and I told them, and they're like, Hildegard's our favorite princess on Sophia. You know, so, so it, was, it was super fitting. <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I've always kind of like named cars like ugly names, like call them Betsy or something, right? Like some, some of them maybe, <laughs> yeah, 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 right? Um, but, they're, but they're beautiful, right? You know, so kind of like almost like the oxymoron a little bit. Um, but so that's kind of, it was kind of just a play on that, like a beautiful car with like a funky name, but that actually had some meaning, you know, and, and, uh, you know, that's the thing I want this thing to, you know, to be a beast when it, you know, battle strong, you know, when it's done, that's the whole goal. So, so now that we're, I also want to touch base on something else. And it's, I'm coming back to how I started the podcast. Which yeah. Was, thanks to you. Um, for those I may know, uh, I, I wanted to, I had the idea of starting out on one of them. I mean, maybe two, three years prior to, 2018 when I first started. Yeah. And the the last person that I that I had a conversation regarding business and, and just doing stuff and, and motivating stuff was you. And so I remember, you know, clearly I I you you can talk about humble begins the movement. Yeah. Um, but I remember having a, a DM you and it was a simple question like, hey man, like what made you start Humble Begins the Movement? And how do you st- get started? You know, you got started. And yeah. I-, I was just expecting like a short answer. You know, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You gave me like this full on three or four big paragraphs. And, um, and you just said, you know, pretty much like if you're thinking about doing something, go and do it. Like, you got to do it. And I was like, God damn, you know. So, yeah, yeah I told you I'm going to go in and record the first video. You're like, I love it. it. Got I up and, it. and I went. That was back in. I was back in June, man. That was like June 2018. So okay. that's the reason why I said that it was thanks to you, man. So tell us a little bit about what's humble begin the movie. Yeah. So um man, at, at that at that time, I I needed an outlet, a positive outlet. Uh, How old were you at this time? Oh, uh, what year is that? 18? 17? I mean, but humble begins the movement had been there. Cause you gave me a sticker when we went. You you came down to Cam in eighteen. I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was Cam eighteen. I gave you a sticker. I probably only been doing it maybe a year. Okay. So probably seventeen is when I when I done it. Maybe. I don't honestly. I don't even know that that time of my life was. There was so much toxicity. Um, I had hurt my back at work, and and prior to that, I had already like started hating my job. Right. Like I was I was at the point like I was a breadwinner. It paid well. Environment was toxic as all hell. Uh, Management sucked. Um, People around me sucked. Um, And my body was just kind of breaking down from doing physical labor. And uh, several times I told my wife, like, fucking hate this job. She's like, quit. I'm like, we got a house. We got kids. I can't I can't quit. Right. I'm not going to be able to go make 30 bucks an hour starting anywhere, you know, and I was, I was, I was already vested within the union and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons it kept me there, but I wasn't listening to my body. And, um, I ended up going out on a uh, work-related injury and I have, um, a degenerative disc disease and, uh, um, I have three bulge discs in my, my lower vertebrae. Um, and at the time, like, I was being treated like I was faking an injury. Um, They put you on light duty. So now you're at like, you guys have like what Ralph's in uh, SoCal? Is it Ralph's a grocery store? Mm -hmm. So we have Fred Meyer up here. They're all Kroger affiliates. 
Uh, so I was working for a Kroger warehouse. Um, and so what they do is basically to punish you, they put you on light duty and they make you stand at the, at the door of the grocery store and greet people. And then they try to like shit on you every chance they get and fire you basically. Make it uncomfortable for you, for you to quit. Yeah, 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 100%. So I'd actually, uh, you know, because there'll be like, I'll hit a breaking point and I'll, you know, I'll tell somebody what it is. So I actually <laughs> got kicked out, of, kicked out of a couple stores. Like I was like too aggressive, you know, but I'm like, I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah, no, like to, to like the managers and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. They're like, you know, and I, and so I was kind of like problematic, but, but a lot of it was because of the pain, because of the injury, because of being treated unfairly. The environment. You know, the yeah, yeah. yeah er, er, everything. <laughs> so I was listening to, um, you know, a lot of music, Nipsey Hustle, the rest, rest in peace. Um, and uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Do you know who Gary V is? Yeah. Love Gary V. <clears throat> yeah. So Gary, Gary V and Nip kind of pulled me out of, you know, my, my funk. Yeah. Oh. And, and so that's when I started printing shirts. So that's what Humble Begins, the movement was, um, was a uh, printing shirt. So I teamed up with a, a guy I was working with because he was like super into graffiti and art. And I can't, I can't draw like that. Like I can, I can design like, like architecture and stuff like that. That's, that's been a passion of mine, but as far as like coming up with designs and drawing and concepts like that's just, I just don't have that skill set. So I linked up with this dude, Nick. Um, and then uh, my, my other homie, he would do a lot of side work. He was a mechanic. So he, he could have cash and he wanted to kind of invest. So right, right here where we're sitting now, I had a screen print shop. So I started screen printing shirts um, and that's what it was. Humble begins the movement and, and, so huh, the definite the way it came about was the definition of humble is of low social administrative or political rank hmm. and begin and begin or or begins like I said I, I, everything has to have like meaning to the words uh, to come into existence arise is a definition to begin so uh, you know, the whole thing is is like I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth you know most people that I know haven't either right? We have to work for ours and, you know, go through the trials and tribulations of, you know, whatever. And I was in this like such bad space. <clears throat> I wanted to use that energy and flip it to propel, you know, to get to a place that I want to be. And uh, I ended up getting fired for it because I was, I had a business and I was on injury and no I was way. basically, yeah, yeah. So I lost my job. So, so my, my biggest fear of, right, not being able to provide for my family and quit this job, right? I didn't want to quit this job. I, I got fired and my unemployment was denied. So I went from on injury, $30 an hour, 30 something bucks an hour trying to do something positive just just for my own sanity to not having an income and thankfully my wife worked part-time at the time but that ain't gonna you know that ain't cutting it no so i ended up uh oh my gosh yeah and then and at the time like the relationships as far as like humble begins are, are concerned just weren't really there like solidified like the the dude that was doing the art I man he had this like vision of like becoming the hundreds and like just having money rolling in he's a little bit younger and i you know i knew better right like shit's gonna take some time before we even like seeing a profit yeah you know and then the other the other dude he ended up getting fucked up on pills and and uh you know yeah i, I hope i hope he's doing well you know i will just say that right um but it's i just at that that went against everything that that we was about, right? Um, and so I ended up paying paying the art dude out because he made a couple specific designs. I cashed him out. And he he didn't negotiate. I just I was like, yo, I'll I'll pay you this much. Here's like a severance package, basically. And uh, 
Yeah. So I paid him out. And then, so it's basically mine more. It's more of a, just a mindset now than anything. I'm not printing shirts or, you know, I still rock my sticker. And, and, you know, when I get, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably maybe do something down the road, but, but yeah, that's uh that's kind of how it started and kind of how it ended, you know, pretty quick, actually, probably within about a year. How does that shape your mindset when it comes to security? Because that's the reason why you, you wouldn't Dog. I mean, you would still be working there, you know, because of security, because right. of seniority, because of mm-hmm. bills, because how does, I mean, now we're going to get into a whole complete deep. Um, yeah. Wow. I, I mean, mean, that's crazy. So you got, you know, uh, sink or swim, you know, fight or flight, right? So, man, it was like, what the fuck do I do? you know it was it was and and my dog had just died too so my dog just died and then I get fired like damn kick me you know kick me while I'm down um man we got right back to it right uh scary right that's the first thing especially like security is one thing but but being able to provide right like like my my job is so much more than just taking care of me, right? I'm taking care of my babies, right? And and I think you can ask any parent. Their you, your number one goal is obviously to keep your kids safe and and to teach them, but but to provide better than than you've had. So for me, I was like, oh oh shit, like everything I work for is like it's gone right like, yeah poof right it's it's gone for real and and i knew i wasn't going to get my job back right it was just and and i and at that point i knew i didn't want my job back too right, right. you know because of the toxicity and everything and the injury i ended up getting a small settlement for my injury um if i wouldn't have gotten fired i would have got a, a bigger settlement i got like 15 G's or something paid my lawyer. I think I came out with like nine, mm-hmm. right. I was able to, to get caught up on bills. Um, but I went into hustle mode, you know, I went in and, and just, uh, man, just went, humbled myself, right. Kind of, kind of living humble begins, right. We're, we're starting from the bottom again. Um, I ended up taking a job as a barista at Starbucks for like a dollar over minimum wage. You know, I went from 30, 30 some bucks an hour to like, to like 13, you know, but it was, an, it was enough to keep the lights on. And then um, from there, I just started exploring new avenues. Um, I ended up getting my real estate license, studied to get my real estate license. <clears throat> um, sadly, I think I could have done really well, but I didn't have the, the financial reserves to go into strict commission sales. Oh, yeah, because you, you're putting a lot of hours without seeing any, any benefit in yeah. making those sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't get paid until the deal closes, right? So you put in all that work ahead of time. So I was working out of a, a, a Keller Williams, basically part-time. I didn't really have a mentor. I didn't really have – I just – I knew I had the gift of gab. And I, and I like sales and I like business, right? I, it, I went back to reflecting to, to school what, what I was good at and, and also what I enjoyed, right? Um, and marketing and that DECA class. Uh, I was actually offered a job. And I'm such a dumbass too. I was offered a job while I was in high school. We had some guy who owned multiple dealerships come in and talk, right? Like they have business people come in, it's a business class. And everyone's scared of this guy. We're like, I think it was probably my senior year. Everyone's scared of this guy. And I'm just like raising my hand, asking questions. And he told me right then and there, he's like, hey, he's like, when you get out of school, come see me. I got a job for you. I was like, yeah, whatever. Like, whatever, dude. <laughs> you know, but so like I reflected back onto all of that, like stuff that I probably had been bottling in and just not really like using for fuel or anything like that. And then, uh, yeah, so. But yeah, I was doing part time. It just wasn't really wasn't really working. And then I took a job at a local firm as a uh, inside sales agent. 
So I wasn't, I was a salaried employee with a, with a bonus. I'd get bonuses. Um, but I got to learn the inner workings uh, of the back office side of real estate. So I was um, pre-qualifying buyers and sellers. Uh, basically, like, let's say you go on like Redfin or Zillow or whatever. You put your name in and, and we had our own site, but then I would call you. And then it basically it's, it's a cold call. We call it a warm call because <laughs> you, put your, you put your information in. It's not cold yet. Right. So it, it gives me the right. You actually have like relinquished your right. So anybody who's watching this, uh, put a fake number, fake name. I'm going I'm to save, I'm going to save you that headache. Uh, cause I'll talk your ear off and I'll, I'll get you to come into the office. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, That's a good yeah, agent. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and so, and I had a team of, 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 uh, outside sales agents, basically real estate brokers. And I would um, find the best fit depending on who, you know, we had a lot of like uh, people who only spoke Spanish, right? Um, and a young lady from Los Angeles uh, who moved up here, she flew in in Spanish. So I would pair a lot of, you know, Spanish speaking buyers with her, you know, so they feel comfortable and, and communicate properly and she could provide a service for them, you know? Um, but yeah, so I got into real estate and just, uh, yeah, but it still wasn't, it still wasn't paying, really paying the bills, but it just, it just went out and um, just tried to do whatever I could to make it happen, really, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Cool. Do you need to use the restroom before we go into the next segment? No, I'm good. You're good? All right. Yeah. So, meanwhile, the car had been just on RPF once, nothing much to it. Yeah, stock, when, basically. When does the idea to let me destroy it come about? <laughs> Man. Um, it was always the idea. Mm -hmm. Back to my EJ one. Wanting a, a gutted car. Wanting a race car. But I was so torn because it was so clean. You know, it was really just like, when did the stars align that I could get another car and not daily drive it? And um, I just said, fuck it. And we tore it, tore it apart. I knew, I knew, if, I knew if I had the, the F-22 still in it, I wouldn't build the G. How, do you, how did you decide on the G? What you think? What you, you mentioned K. Would you contemplate H or like what was what was? Yeah, mindset? yeah. So, so I I did want to go J, mm -hmm. and then I think it was like a Honda tuning article, where it might have been like called like the K killer. Or I, I don't know what the article was titled or whatever, and it was about this uh, this um, this J build or the the G build, and on a, um, on a what on Civic. Yeah, they were doing like H two B setups, but okay. they were running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they were running. It was basically for drag racing. And um, so I read this thing over and over. And you remember the first Fast and Furious? Everybody does, right? So there's a scene where I think they're all pulling up. There's like five or six cars, and there's a green EG that's uh, pulling up to like the parts store. They all like they all file in sideways mm -hmm. yeah so that car was actually one of the homemade posters i made oh. if, if i recall correctly it was a 2.1 liter stroked b16 that's wow yeah so, yeah so this is like this is probably like i don't know when the movie came out so this is like probably 98 so I've always, ever since that car, it had, had ITBs and it had like a, a molded wide body kit on it. So rad. Yeah. yeah. And the, um, but so the G, the, the G build is basically like an OEM stroker build. So I think uh, F or H22 is 90.7 millimeter stroke. Uh, F22 is 95. F23 is 97. Uh, the F series are 86 millimeter bore where the H is an 87 millimeter bore, 
right? So that's kind of where you get your displacement from with the, with the difference in stroke and, and uh, bore. So after reading this and, and loving that stroker car for so long and just liking the idea of just, just the stroker, at one point I was looking at um, BC, um, Brian Cower stroker kits and stuff. So I was thinking maybe just, just doing an H stroker. You know, I, I had explored a lot of different options. Mm -hmm. And um, so the homie Sam hit me up because I'd, I'd kind of ta been talking to him about this. I'm like, man, I keep reading this article. Like, this thing's pretty fucking dope. He worked out like a minor key. And he goes, hey, I got an F23 for you. And what do you mean I got it? You got an F23 for me. He's like, this car had blow by. This lady wanted a motor swap, so we swapped a motor for her. It was in a sixth gen. I go, okay, what do you want for her? He's like, free, come pick it up. We don't, we don't do cores. We, you know, we scrap them. So for free, right off the bat, I got an F23, complete long block. Mm. So that's really was like, all right, this is the route we're going now. You know, because it just fell into my lap. You know, who you can't turn down a free long block. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another dude was doing, a, uh, I knew at another shop was doing a, a swap on a, a BB6 Prelude, consuming oil or something was wrong with it. Sold me the complete H22 long block for 300 bucks. So with the, with the G, you have to swap all, time, all H timing components over. So your water pump, your timing cog, all that stuff. Um, I didn't want to have to source everything. So I, I got lit, basically I got a complete head mm -hmm. and then I got all the timing pieces I needed. All in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two so bills. I got, I got essentially I got two engines for $300. So like, here we go. So, uh, then I, I was still working at Starbucks at the time and I was saving my tip money. So, so I called uh, Kaizen Speed or KS Tune. I think Kaizen Speed is they they deal with the domestic side and KS Tune deals with the import side. Either way, mm -hmm. uh, cent Central Washington uh, H H series specialist, and uh, they were in the process of developing their uh, their own F twenty three H beam rod. I think it is or I beam. I don't, I don't remember one or the other H beam or I beam six hundred horsepower rated uh, KS Tune rod. So, uh, so I ordered those cause those were coming hot off the press. And then, um, I ordered a, so, so when I, uh, what a lot of guys do is they run a K series piston cause it's 86 millimeter bore. Um, and the piston just has to be rotated 180 degrees and it gives, mm -hmm. I think like, um, like 11 point something compression. Well, okay. Yeah, but I didn't want to just run a cast piston. Like if I had the whole motor taken apart, so then I called uh, Kaiser Speed again, and um, had them um, order me a, a, a custom Weissco piston, forged piston, um, eleven and a half H twenty two dome, eleven and a half to one compression, with a F twenty three wrist pin. So mm -hmm. they made a, cus a custom piston, and but the the K series actually share the same wrist pin design as the F series engines. That's why they're able to use them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why that's like the budget version is like is is um, they use stock rods. I think people upgrade like ARP hardware and then throw a, a, a Type R piston in it or a K series piston in it, and then just just send it. So, but I just, I wanted it to just be, you know, fully built. Um, there's a lot of stipulation about oil starvation with the, with the G because you have to block off uh, two oil passages. Um, but there's a, a CB Accord guy. Uh, do you know uh, Fernando and Javier Pena? Um, they're out of Washington up here. Um, no. One of them has a JDM dock F20 B, I think a CB coupe. I think that thing's like six, seven hundred horsepower. Whoa. Um, and then Fernando, so that's Javier's car. Fernando has a um, uh, a green CB coupe with a G22 build, and he fully built his. So I consulted him, you know, through and through. He sent me all his links on. I think it was like CB7 tuner or, or whatever. No. Mm -hmm. And so he gave me a lot of information and. Um, I just took it and ran with it. So, so what else have you done to it? I mean, the head, the whole head is built. 
Yeah, uh, head is type S cams, uh, type S valves, uh, skunk two dual strings retainers. Um, pretty mild the head actually, and then uh, I got like AM cam gears. <laughs> um i just i'm working on uh rbc manifold right now oh, i was about to tell when is the itb uh, showing up nah i mean later <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you off camera what the plans are we can't we can't let all the cats oh my right. god <laughs> he's going turbo guys i don't know <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> he's going all wheel drive uh, turbo um Nah, not all wheel. You know, I I love the all wheel drive. I don't got ten racks to pay for a transmission though. <laughs> okay, uh, so those, those guys are doing crazy things. Oh yeah, people people are definitely spending a lot <laughs> more than I feel comfortable. Um, yeah, yeah. For so sure. so then that gets built. It's gonna be you know for now in a yeah. Um, everything else you took apart though too. So like, what was the thought process? Uh, what is the thought process for the suspension? And oh, by the way, we haven't even got to your new wheels. Oh. Yeah. Oh, love those wheels. Love the color. Love the, the got, specs. Oh my God, you nailed it. Yeah. So, tell, so tell me about your wheels that you, that you um, tell me about the thought process about the RPF ones. Um, yeah. Can I, can I, because we haven't even talked about the Odyssey. Damn. But then tell me about the Riga Masters. Yeah. So um, I passed on a set of Regas, OG Regas, for like, like $1,300. Oh, yeah. Like this is when I was like, I think when I was like on injury, so I didn't really have the funds to like, I was going to sell the, the, the inkies and um, just didn't, I just passed on them. Mm-hmm. B- big mistake. So when they re-released them, there was no way I was going to pass on them. And, and now at this point, fast forward, um, I'm in a really good position financially and I'm, I'm working a, a really good job. Um, I'm providing and I just said, fuck it. And I bought them brand new, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and I went back and forth on specs and I, the specs that I got, I actually bought them because I did my math wrong. Oh, that's always fun. What happened? So, so I just, I'm normally pretty good at math and I just, uh, <laughs> I, I was doing it in my head. I wasn't writing it down. And um, so essentially these specs are only two inch millimeter less poke than my 17 by 10 RPF ones. Yeah. So, so, so these are 17, nine and a half plus 12, right? Um, so there's more inner, inner barrel clearance but we're only two millimeters less poke than the RPF ones because of the offset and the width and everything. Um, I initially, if my, if I would have done my math, right, I probably would have just ordered the 17 by nine variation, but um, so now we're going to build the car around the, uh, around the wheel. Nice. Yeah. So I, I plan on running a 255-40 tire. Mm, yeah. Nice. At, at, at all corners. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, um, the reason why I've been jamming so hard on the car is it's actually going to go up to uh, body work uh, up in Bellingham to my friend uh, Austin's uh, Heroes Hot Rods. He recently uh, started his own um, basically hot rod customization uh, business and we're going to widen the car. Um, no flares. It's going to be old school, uh, metal work. Um, but keep it subtle as if it was OEM. Yeah. It was as subtle as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I call it OEM wide body, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to retain, um, all the, the flat spots on the fenders. Basically, he trims them, he'll pull them out, and then build the fender and uh, build the fender around the wheel. Wow. Yeah. That's going to be so cool. Yeah. So that's, that's why I've been making a push because school starts back for me next, next uh, week. So uh, I, had a, I had a couple week break. So I needed to get this thing into rolling shell uh, condition. Because it's, I... it's, it's, ahead, about a, it's about a, it's about a two and a half. Two and a half hour drive 
a two hour, two hour plus drive from where I'm at to his shop. Because that was a big discussion. I wasn't sure if you were going to go complete. That, I, that's what I figured. I'm like, well, if you're stripping the car to its bone, I mean, you guys understand, he stripped the whole car, wiring, everything. So I thought maybe you were going to do a full color change in and out. So I am. I wasn't going to. Last time we talked, I wasn't. You um, switched it. So now you are. I talked to Ralph a lot. Ralph talks to a lot of people. Yeah, no, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph's the homie. He's someone um, I respect tremendously in the community, right? He's like the gatekeeper of the Accord community. Um, and uh, I've, I've developed a pretty good relationship with him over the years, helping out with uh, Northwest Accord meet and stuff like that. And, um, you know, he, I didn't, I didn't want to. I did want to, but I didn't want to, right? Because it's a lot of work. It's kind of one of those scary things, right? You're stepping out of your comfort zone, um, finding quality paint work, right? Like there's there's a lot. I know Austin at Heroes, the body work's going to be, I'm, I can't wait to send it to him. I'm not even scared of him cutting the car up because I just know it's going to work out. But then like, damn, who's going to paint it, right? Um, and thankfully now, like I actually have a relationship uh, the guy, uh, my friend Tuto has been mentoring me on shaving my engine bay. Um, and he's probably one of the premier painters here in the Pacific Northwest. So he's going to end up getting the car afterwards. Um, and, uh, but yeah, talking to Ralph, he was like, dude, he's like, you're, you're going to widen the car. This is, you know, not everybody knew, but he's like, you're going to widen the car. Like, fuck it, go for it. So yeah, you're right. So we're going to go for it. So I have, I have a color palette in mind. I've still been going back and forth. I have a pretty good idea of, of what, where we're going to go. And I think it's going to work out well. So that's going to be, you know, we're going to keep that under wraps a little bit. And for, going back to debut. your, and it's funny because going back to your building around the wheel, because yeah, you're, uh-huh. you're going based on the color of the wheel, which is a beautiful wheel. So um you definitely have options i think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see so that's cool man oh, well i have man. to i have to build it around the valve cover too and the calipers because the valve cover daniel at word works oh i've been sitting on on this valve cover the shaved valve cover and calipers for two years maybe 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 yeah maybe Maybe not quite two years, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. And I, I, and I initially, saw the post when he sent it to you. It was a while, yeah. while back. And initially, and initially that color was was to be a contrast to the sage metallic. Right. So that's that's <laughs> been the hardest that's been the hardest thing is like to have everything flow properly with the color change too. And the wheel, right? Because it's like very specific colors. So I think I think I think we got it. So you're gonna respray the, the interior or the outside of the car? Everything. Everything. Yeah. You're gonna cage it? I don't know yet. We'll see when we get it up to heroes. Uh, it's been a discussion. Uh, I don't want to do full cage because street car. I want to protect the side of my head in case of an impact, right? I don't wanna yeah, I mean there's I'm not a little dude. I see little guys rocking full cages. Um, I still want to be safe on the road, but it's mm-hmm. definitely going to be two. It's going to be a two seater. Oh, okay. So yeah, no more, no more. yeah, yeah. No, I I want to have the car weigh in at about twenty five hundred pounds. So I think I think we can do it. So yeah. yeah, light, light, nimble, big sticky tires, pushing under three. You know, horsepower, and then maybe put a stamp. Uh, yeah, go over the three mark. I, I'd, I'd like I'd like 425 wheel. I'd be happy with that. So it's 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 gonna get some yeah it's gonna get some boost on it. Yeah, I want I want to hurt some feelings on the street. I'm sick. Uh, domestics. So, I want to hurt domestics. Okay, feelings. Domestics. You're gonna go yeah, back to yeah all day, that. all day. So man, that's gonna be a, okay. So I like the fact that you're taking the time though. That, that's gonna be a long term project. That, so oh, you know yeah. the, the the last thing you want to do is rush it and. But you seem to be kicking ass. Like, yeah, I mean, just like what a couple months back, everything was just on the side. So now you're putting back yeah. things together and um, just trying to get it into a roller so you can send it over there, put the flares, come back, the 
take everything off so that way you send it back to paint yeah and then and then yeah, so right is- right now, everything I'm doing is just for mock-up purposes for, to get it to, to be a rolling chassis and then mock-up. Um, I have to modify some engine mounts because of the RBC manifold. Mm-hmm. Uh, just some other stuff that I'm working on just isn't going to clear as it sits. Um, so just just really figuring out where, basically because I've, I've been designing and building stuff without having the engine or anything in the car, right? So I, d- I don't know where clearances of things are. And so now I'm putting it together. Like I have to redo some of my brake lines for my brake line tuck, uh, which isn't a big deal, but it was like, initially I had bent my brake lines with the idea of H manifold. And then I went RBC. So now it's like, you know, so I want to try to work out all those kinks and then the car will get fully stripped one more time for paint um inside wheel wells like the whole nine like everything's gonna get and and the idea is is growing up and even even to current standards magazine features um you see predominantly civics and integras Mm -hmm. um and i grew up loving so many of those builds but i want that same standard in an Accord chassis. I want, I want to show people that through a little bit of dedication, hard work, perseverance, patience, you know, whatever, that an, an Accord chassis can be just as competitive, you know, on the street or, you know, whatever, right? Like the, the, the thoroughness of a build, you know, wow. and there, there, and there's definitely guys like, that have come before us that I think have done amazing jobs with the Accord community. And I also want to pay homage to them and, you know, kind of like know your roots, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You mentioned Jason. I mean, yeah. the pioneer of the, to me, the, the OG of the OGs. I mean, He's the original owner of the car, I believe. OG right? owner. Yeah. OG owner and like five different yeah. motors on that car bags. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The new, the new wheel tire set up the gas is insane. So yeah. Yeah. Pushing, pushing definitely the boundaries, yeah. So. Yeah. And you got guys like uh, Mike in Hawaii, Mariani. Uh, speaking of metal flares. Yeah, right? He's got a full VIP style Accord wagon, right? That's like straight out of Japan. Which was crazy because it's him and then the burgundy wagon where they went together to that one meet. I yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh I think god. it was like a, I think it was like a hell of flesh meat or something. Something like that. Yeah. Oh my god, they they took over that meat and and forever I've been in love with that burgundy wagon, which to to my knowledge still exists. It just it does. Run. It doesn't yeah. run. It just kicks it. Which I'm like, damn, I would love to know where it is and hopefully somebody could, you know, the owner could get it running. But um, yeah, yeah, you know, that's funny. You mentioned the whole poor chassis. Um, there's there's a few of us right there's 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 a small hand uh handful of, of dudes and ladies that for whatever reason we like that for chassis i don't know what it is i think is that that idea to be different that idea to say like i know it's not the most popular you know weight wise yes it's not yeah. as this is not going to be as um as light as an eg hatch but it's also not as heavy as an integra you know with four doors and and so that idea, once you start getting that idea out of your head, then you start seeing all these different builds and, and the possibilities. And yeah. they can look extremely aggressive. And and I think a lot of people love the Accord, love the way it looks, but they wouldn't buy it themselves because they know that it's going to take that much more work to right. really make it look like, you know, Civic has Jays racing everything, Spoon racing everything, Mugens. You, know. you so can they build have, a catalog car. Easy. Easy. Easy and there's and there's so many companies still to this day mm-hmm. developing parts. So when you have a group of guys like Fat for Customs who says like we don't have anything, let's build stuff for cars. Um, I know that the community may not buy all the products, but definitely is appreciative that that they're available. They're they're they're, they're trying, and so yeah. But it goes back to that. They they knew that it wasn't going to blow up because it's in a core chassis. So they're trying right. to you know grow that, and so definitely. That's that's the reason why I absolutely love the fact that you're building the the Accord. Um, aside from the fact that it has all that sentimental, emotional, you know, attachment because of all the pictures, all the videos that you have, all the memories right. that you have in that car, 
it, it's coming back around. You're now trying to build your race car around it. And, and I can definitely see you, you know, being 50, 60. And so oh, I'm going to drive it forever. And I love that. I, yeah. And that's, that's to me is the, the most um, rewarding feeling, you know, knowing that you've stuck with, with a chassis that is not the most popular, right. but for whatever reason, it just brings joy to you. And that's what you continue to build. Man, so coming up to the last segment, one thing that I definitely want to touch base with you is motivation and yeah. positivity. That's something that you always seem to um, to share across your social platforms. And I think that, like you mentioned, it comes back from challenging situations and things of that nature. And I was having that discussion with my buddy Easy about you. Like, you're always trying to... Uh, provide that that positive energy to for sure people all the time and it's, it's always get up and do something about whatever you're going through yeah um, when it comes to that at the moment motivation what, what what gives you that drive at the moment man you know my kids for sure um definitely like they make it easier to wake up right like we have a real loving household so, um, you know, they're going to be 12 and they, they still want to sit and snuggle and cuddle and, you know, so, so the love in the house for sure. Um, just knowing that I haven't, I haven't, I think I'm just hitting my stride. So love that. You know, um, lots of up, ups and downs, right? Like growing up unfortunate situation um made mistakes right but man at the end of the day i'm blessed every day put that best foot forward let's keep it rolling you know um just like my current situation um you know i was i had a really good opportunity um and i was laid off right due to covid I could, I had two options. I could, I could sulk, right. And cry Poor me. Right. Finally felt like I was hitting my stride and then you get shit on again. Or, you know what? I, I was already enrolled in the school, but I'm like told all of my senior managers, Hey, this is what my plans are. I'm going to school for business. I'm going to knock it out of the park and I'm going to, when, when the economy picks back up, I'm coming back here and I'm going to pick up where I left off, you know, like you, you can, you can be a victim or you can be the victor, you know, um, being the victim is easy, you know, and shitty things happen to good people all the time and, and things are tough, but I'm going to sit and cry about it. We're going to make something happen. You know, being the victim is super easy, especially when you hang out with a whole bunch of victim mentality people. Yeah, because I mean, what's the, what what's the say? What's the saying? Uh, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room, or something along the lines of that, right? Like, I want to be around people that are uplifting and and about the same stuff, right? Like, not people that are crying about they lost their job. Like, fuck yeah. me too. <laughs> if you if you if you're the smartest one in the room, you need. A new set of friends that's something along the lines of that because you always have to keep growing i think yeah man it's, this this past year was very challenging and it seems like 2021 has been a, a, a you know tiny little you know blink and we're almost done with the year and so yeah definitely a lot of people benefited from it a lot of people were impacted negatively um but going back to you losing your job ironically um when you're you know you know, try not to lose your job and so that happens yeah. and you're like what the heck i mean obviously now that has changed your whole mentality towards the whole like you mentioned providing uh security and so i think it was um uh, i'm not going to say that it's a complete blessing because you still have yeah. gotten so many struggles from that but from that now you're you know enrolled in school um business if i'm not mistaken you're that's, that's the, the career path and so the, the 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 major huge immense example that you're setting up for your daughters which right. is look i'm still because i know you cook all the time 
you cook delicious food from what I can see. You're building cars, you know, right. a very budget build and, and being responsible with your responsibilities. Going to school and, and you know, being a husband and, and being a father. I mean, holy crap. Like the example that you're providing in your own household is, is to, to be definitely something that needs to be said. And so. Um, I appreciate it. No, I mean, dude, I mean, seriously, it, 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 it's crazy. And so I definitely, like you mentioned, you take your kiddos everywhere you go. He is going yeah. trips. And so. Obviously, your wife is probably the, the nucleus, the, the rock of that family. And oh yeah, for sure. And so, so but, but see, all that, all that comes together. You know, that's that's part of being a family. That's part of being in that in that, in that system. And and so, you know, I, I, I must salute you that the fact that you're going, you, you are in school, you're kicking ass. You're not even like just you're completely kicking ass, and <laughs> it's it can be challenging, especially oh, man. having kids and responsibilities. Are you doing it, man? That's that's I love that, man. We appreciate. Yeah, this this last quarter, um, man, was was the hardest because summer quarters condensed. Like most quarters are like ten weeks, at least at my college. Um, so it's eight weeks, and then uh, I took human resource management this quarter, and we had to do a group project virtually, and we had to write a human resource manual for a business. And we got, uh, we got full credit on it. hundred, hundred, a hundred, hundred percent. So to be able to, to manage and facilitate that virtually with five different people who are juggling, you know, just as much, if not more than myself, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate because of my situation that the way I was laid off, right. It was due to COVID. Um, I did get extensions for unemployment and stuff because I went through the proper channels and I have like state approved uh, schooling and, and whatnot. I mean, one of the ladies in my group, she still worked full time. Right. So she's, you know, hats off to her, you know? Um, but, but yeah, it's a uh, man, lots of challenges, but at the same time, like if you're not, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing and, and, man, it's easy to run from those challenges, but when, but when you get up and hit them head on, you, you find that they're not, it, they're scarier in theory than they are hard in reality. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's kind of just what I've adopted, especially with losing my job six, seven years ago and r- literally having to start over to, to now, um, 20, 2020 to 2021 has probably been my best years in at least a decade. And I, and I, I, because I, I care about everybody around me, I, I feel bad even saying that because I know so many people are struggling, right? Like this last year has fucked a lot of people up. But for me, I think everything that I dealt with leading up to last year july 31st when i got laid off prepared me you know like steel sharpened steel you know to be able to deal with it persevere trudge through the mud and not just make not just get through it but to dominate it love it you know and that's just the momentum i'm trying to build on you know with the car with my family life, you know, with school, you know, and uh, just just every everything that I do. Mm-hmm. So, dude, this definitely has been a pleasure. Uh, I really thank you for taking the time and having this chat. It definitely, I wanted I wanted to pick your brain, and this is exactly like what I expected. You know, nothing less from you because. I, I had, like I said, I, I've been following your your journey you know, through social media. Um, when you were down here in Cali, I love the fact that you were out here, and I definitely want to make it out to to uh, Seattle area or wherever they they have the a court meet. Um, and would definitely love to see your core there because it, it's definitely um, it's good to see the progress and the, the plans that you have for it. It'll be a while, but that's okay because I think. Uh, like Ralph says, all good things take time, right? And so oh, yeah. a lot of good things are taking time. Um, school-wise, before you know it, you're gonna be you're gonna be transferring or you're gonna be doing whatever you know you're yeah. gonna do. And and can't, so that, can't that, wait. I mean it's it's just 
kind of like you you mentioned, you know, uh, you can be a victim or you can be the victor. And so I think right now you're going through that, that little midpoint. Um, I love where you're at mentally, man. I think you're kicking ass that you're surrounding yourself and listening to the positive things to continue. Yeah. And, and you've been through some, thank you for sharing some of those life experiences, man, because it's, I know you left off a lot of different things, and and, and, and I understand. Uh, I think it, people don't quite understand how much you've actually overcome and mature. Um, and man, it, just, it, it gives me motivation to say, man, like continue doing what you're doing. And so I want to thank you so much, man. Thank you for just all the positivity, because you know somehow Easy knew about you. He dropped the Civic, I know, before he dropped that core, but <laughs> but I, I would be surprised to you know how many more people know of you, and it's just based on on this and so thank you man definitely appreciate yeah. it i i appreciate the opportunity of the conversation um I, you know i'm deeply humbled that i was able to you know not only be be a part of this but to be uh, a catalyst to you uh doing this and and same with watching your growth from the start and um Man, I, I, I love how original and how you keep it true to, to you, right? Um, when you're out at the meets and, and if it's a car you like, you like, you don't just gravitate to the car that everybody's gravitating to. Right. Or, you know, you, 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 you give everyone, you know, a fair shake, you know, and, and super humble and, and, and uh, it's, a, it's an amazing thing and, and keep at it. I appreciate that, man. Well, I'm learning from you guys, you know, the older heads. And, um, I'm not that old. I'm not that old. <laughs> you're super old. No, no, no. But I'm you know, but you're definitely, uh, you know, getting a lot of things done, man. Like I said, like I've been been watching the growth through social media, and there's nothing that, um, you know, like I mentioned, I have nothing but good things to say about you, man. So I definitely appreciate it. And, um, and then, you know, you mentioned you know, I, I when whenever I'm up in Pacific Northwest, I'm gonna have yeah. to pay you a visit, dude, because it's, it's gonna be pretty cool to see this car in, in its flesh. Well, and and uh, you know, you mentioned the Northwest Accord me, um, and of course, if they have it again, uh, I'll absolutely be involved in it. Um, definitely show up either the Odyssey if this isn't running. Um, we have a lot of other stuff going on. I've been active, active in the community. We have a couple meets, uh, two meets a month and then a cars and coffee. So if you do come up, um, it, you could really get to see, uh, there's so many more people like me up here and just amazing builds that just, you know, most people don't know about cause, cause of, cause of our, uh, geolo geolocation. So, um, yeah, let, let me know when you're ready to come up. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll go cruise around in the van. I'll introduce you to some oh, people. Hell yeah. And, and um, you're going to see some beautiful cars. I know you're going to love it. So now, dude, Jake, thank you, man. This has been an absolute pleasure, dude. Keep grinding. Definitely humble begins the movement. You're living through it. You are, you know, that. Yeah. You stay for that. You, you live through that, man. So thank you so much for your time, man. I definitely appreciate it. I know a lot of our listeners uh, definitely appreciate it. And if you guys, you know, stick around this long, man, uh, there you go. Like, there's, there's, you can be the victim or the victor. And definitely, uh, Jake's out here kicking ass. Man. We're out here winning. That's, that's it, man. So, more to come, man. Appreciate Thank uh, you for your time, dude. All right, brother. Appreciate it.